This project extends the original Azure Mini Active Directory Lab by integrating Azure Files as a shared storage backend. Instead of relying only on VM disks or standalone file server, this solution demonstrates how to expose Azure File Storage in three ways. First, direct NFS mounts. Domain joined Linux clients can mount Azure File Shares directly using Active Directory for identity management. Second, Samba Gateway Server. A Linux client mounts Azure files over NFS and then reshares it with Windows machines through a Samba file gateway, providing seamless SMB access with domain integration. Lastly, we're going to use it for user home directories. Azure files can act as a centralized home directories for domain joined users, keeping data consistent across sessions and VMs. This project focuses on Azure files with NFS, providing fully managed POSIX compliant file shares from the cloud. The back end is an Azure storage account, which provides durability, scalability, and enterprise grade availability from the storage. While Azure files support both SMB and NFS within the same storage account, a single Azure file share cannot be accessed by both protocols. You have to choose the protocol per share. In other words, there is no multi-protocol support built into Azure files. Because of this, we deploy a Linux Samba gateway. It mounts the Azure files via NFS on the back end and then reshares it to Windows clients over SMB, preserving AD integration and giving both Linux and Windows consistent access. This setup provides a practical way to bridge protocol differences while taking advantage of the scalability and resilience of Azure storage. Okay, let's talk about the architecture diagram of what we're gonna build. We're building in the US central region. And the first thing we do is we provision the virtual network or a DVNet. Now within that VNet, we're going to have three subnets. The first subnet is the mini AD subnet, and we use the module that's out there so you can reuse this implementation for your own projects, but we put it in its own subnet and that deploys the domain controller. The next subnet is the Bastion subnet. What we've done in this project is we've made everything private except Bastion. So when we do the demo, we're gonna use Bastion to access all the resources that we've provisioned. The third and filed sub final subnet is where we place the VM instances that are we're going to use in this project. The first one is the Windows AD instance. This is when the, when the instance starts up, we execute a VM extension to join it to the domain. And then at that point, you can use this box as your AD admin box. You can go in and add or remove users and do that type of things. The other server that we're going to provision is the Linux server. Now, the first thing we do with the Linux server is we're going to mount the NFS file system that we're going to deploy. And then we're going to deploy a Samba gateway so that the window instance can access the, the NFS file storage directly. This is because there's no multi-protocol support for Azure files. So then we have the storage account. So we create a storage account, which is a regular storage account, and we're going to declare an NFS share on that. And when you do that, it creates a private link to the account, and it also drops in a network card into the network where you're going to access your NFS storage. So once that's all done, the NFS can be accessed from the NFS gateway and directly and then indirectly from the Windows directory through the, the Samba share. The last thing we're going to build is we create several accounts in here, 80 accounts and then local accounts. We're going to put them all in a key vault. And so what you'll see when we do the demo, we're going to go back and forth between logging into things and going to the key vault and getting the credentials. Now let's talk about the prerequisites. I'll put a link up above for the Azure and Terraform Easy Setup video. That walks you through how you set up your, a build identity within your Azure account for doing um, Terraform builds. So watch that video if you've never done one of our, our videos before. It's a much simpler case to look at. But the three things you need is you need that Azure account. And in the Azure account, you have to have that build identity. And the build identity is going to give you four UIDs that you're going to use. And we'll see that when we run the check ENV script. The next one is you need the AZ CLI. The steps between the builds are some glue or it retrieves values and passes in parameters. We do that all with the AZ CLI. And then finally, you need the latest version of Terraform to actually do the builds. Now we're ready to build the code. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go into um, this block here, copy this, and bring it up into your development environment. I'm using an Ubuntu development environment. So I'm going to paste that in. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run a script called Check EMV. And Check EMV is going to go and make sure that you have all the prerequisites installed. It, it looks for AZ, 
CLI, it looks for Terraform, it looks at JQ, and then it looks at all those environment variables. And again, that video on how you set up is very helpful here. And then I'll, I'll log in into AZ using those credentials. So everything looks good here. So what we're going to do is run the apply script. Now, the apply takes approximately 20 minutes. Build has completed. So now what we want to do is bring up the Azure console and let's take a look at what got built. OK, so the first thing you want to do is go to resource groups. And in the resource groups, you'll notice you've got two resources. Uh, one is the the mini AD resource group. The way we've done the module is when you spin up a mini AD from our module, it creates a separate resource group just for the AD resources. And so if you click on that, you'll see everything associated with the mini AD. This is the Ubuntu server that is running Samba 4 as a domain controller and a DNS server. Then there's the disk and then there's associated networking with the mini AD. So it's in its own subnet and its own resource group. So let's go back to resource groups. Now let's look at the main project resource group. So click on that. First, want to look at the networking. So let me look at the virtual network. And if you click on subnets, what you will see is the three subnets from our architecture diagram are present. You've got the VM subnet where we put the instances. Then we have the mini AD subnet and then the bastion. And the bastion is how we will access everything. The next thing I want to do is look at the VM instances. So I'm going to switch by type here. And there are two VM instances. So first one is the NFS gateway. Now this instance, when it starts up with the custom data, it's going to join the Active Directory instance. And then it's also going to mount the NFS file storage. And then the last thing it's going to do is it's going to spin up a Samba file server so that the slash NFS file system will be exposed to the Windows clients if they need it. And so that's that's what this server does. It it's, mounts the NFS and acts as a gateway with Samba. The next instance is the Windows instance. The Windows instance is the instance you would log in with your Active Directory credentials to manage users. And it's also what we'll log in to show the shared file system mounted through the Samba gateway. So we'll modify some files on the Linux side and then show how they're presented on the Windows side by logging in. The next thing we'll talk about is the NFS storage account. And if you click on file shares, you'll see the NFS file system has been provisioned into the storage account. So that's the first thing you need to do when you do an NFS file system. The next thing you need to do is go back to the project account. You've got to configure a private endpoint to the storage account. And after you provision the private endpoint to the storage account, you need to also drop in the a network card, which will allow clients to connect to this private IP address and access that storage account over the NFS protocol. So there's a couple steps. You got to provision the NFS storage account. You need to do the private endpoint, and then you have to drop a network card in to make sure that the clients can access the data. The last part in the project group is the key vault. And this is where we store our credentials. So when I go into the key vault here and click on secrets, you'll see all the credentials that created in this account end up being generated credentials and stored in a key vault. So we're going to focus mostly on the AD credentials, and we're going to log in as John Smith. So I'll click on that and click on that. Say retrieve secret value, and these are the credentials I'll use in the demo. For the demo, we're going to use Bastion. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to log into the NFS gateway server. So I'll click on that, then select connect via Bastion. And remember, we're going to use John Smith. And the VM password is in the credentials. Copy that. Paste it in. Connect. Okay, I am now logged in as John Smith. And so let's do an ID. This will tell you the Active Directory information associated with John Smith. We are 10,001. It's in mCloud users. They're a member of Linux admins. So if they're a member of Linux admins, so I do git ent group Linux admins. So that means that these two users, Raj Patel and John Smith, they can do sudo bash. And at that point, they're, they're root and they can do whatever they need to do to update the system. So I'm going to exit out of here. And so I'm going to do df.h. You're going to see nfs slash nfs is mounted to the storage account. And then we also use 
NFS storage account for the home directories. So let's go to our home directory and let's do nano hello world.txt. Greetings from my home directory. And the reason we're doing this is we're going to show how this presents on the other side when we log in. And now what we want to do is go back to project. Let's log in to the Windows server with Bastion. And I need to go over here. I've got to put the fully qualified domain name in here. Then get the password. I've logged in as John Smith. I go in here and uh, I can see using the AD users and groups snap in. See all the users and group associated with this domain. So if I go in here and click on users, search by sample, you'll see we've got all those users that we created in the, in the build scripts. So that's the, the AD part of it. So let's go to the Windows Explorer. And you'll see what we do is we mount slash NFS to the Z drive. So we put at the home and we are John Smith and we can see hello world. So that file that I did on the Linux side is now presented to me on the Windows side. So let's go the other direction. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm just going to pick this Windows Media Player. I'm going to copy this right here and I'm going to go back to my Z drive and go to my home directory and go to John Smith again. Mm. I'll paste that. So you get Windows Media Player. So it's a collection of files that probably don't make a lot of sense to put on Linux, but the objective is to show what it looks like. So if I go back to my NFS gateway, go to my home directory, you'll see it's got Windows Media Player right there. So um, I don't really like that. So I'm going to eliminate it from this side, go back to the Windows side, and it's gone. So you can see we're operating on the same file system. Um, then you've got also data in here. So I could uh, say new text file, let's see. Windows, click on that and say, welcome from the Windows side, save that. Now let's go back to our uh, Linux and do NFS data and you'll see windows.txt. Okay, so what we've seen is we've got NFS file shared storage deployed on the Linux side. It's presenting on the Windows side using the Samba gateway. I can modify files on either side. They show up correctly. I didn't really get into it, but it also shows that it's the right users. So if I go back into here and say properties, you're going to see the right users displayed. So it's, it's managing the identity with Active Directory. It's NFS and it's shared via a Samba share. So that's, that's pretty much it for the demo. Uh, the only thing left to do is to be a good stewards of your cloud account. And I'm going to go back to um, my Ubuntu environment and I'm going to do destroy.sh. The destroy uh, also takes between 15 to 20 minutes.